Hello, it's a very beautiful Friday morning. Um, we welcome you to the One Stop Breakfast Show with MCL TV. Good morning, the Abia. Thank God it's Friday, and of course, it is now time for us to educate, inform, and entertain you with happenings around you in Nigeria and East Diaspora. My name is Stella Okichuku, and of course, it promises to be good on today's program. All you need to do is just for you to see glue up to your television set. And of course, you know, we usually start with um, the was a man, but actually just to inspire you as you go out for your daily activities. And of course, for certain things that might be coming your way today, just to give you a change of mindset on how to go about it. And it says, don't wait for extraordinary opportunities. Seize common occasions and make them great. Weak men wait for opportunities. Strong men make them. You need to make... Um, you know, um, opportunity. Just like he says, that a weak man waits for opportunity. Strong men make them. Um, so it is just trying to tell you that you need not to wait for the opportunity to come. Just seize a common occasion to make them great. Okay, you need not to sit back and wait for you to have the opportunity to excel or for you to, you know, um, have an opportunity to create a need for yourself. You need to create it on yourself. Okay, um, you need to tell yourself that, look, I am strong. I need to make something out of this uh, little common time uh, that I have or little occasion that will be coming uh, my way. So whatever you're facing, whatever that might come your way today, please, please, please make something out of it. There is a difference between ordinary and extra. You know, what makes it extraordinary is just that extra there. So you need to keep making yourself great whatever or in any situation you find yourself. You mustn't wait for the opportunity to actually come for you to do those good things. I welcome you once again to your one stop breakfast show on MCL TV. And now to the news uh, that is making the round. The Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, has clarified that the valedictory section of the Federal Executive Council of FCC to be held on May 22nd does not mean that the cabinets will not dissolve on the same day. In a statement issued in Abuja on Thursday, the minister said it is prerogative of President Mohammed Buhari to dissolve the cabinet anytime he chose. The statement signed by the special assistant to the minister, Shegu Abdeyemi, clarifying the minister's earlier statement to State House correspondent after Thursday's FEC meeting in Abuja. It is inaccurate to extrapolate from my statement that the FET valedictory section will hold on 22nd May to say that the president will dissolve the cabinet on the same day. The Senate has summoned the Inspector General of Police to appear before the upper chamber and brief it on increasing speed of killings in different parts of the country. This followed a 10 prayer motion by Senator Shehu Sani at plenary on Thursday. The bill titled Senseless Killing of a Britain and Adoption of Three Others in a Holiday Resort in Cardinal State by Bandits was co sponsored by all other lawmakers. The Senate also urged security agencies to immediately deploy drones and interceptors in tracking kidnappers that were asking for ransom. It equally used the federal government to set up an interagency tax force to tackle cases of banditry and kidnapping in Kaduna, Kassena, Zamfara, and Niger states. Furthermore, the upper chamber urged security agencies to give special cover to foreign workers and tourists. It also urged telecommunication companies to provide security agencies with information in areas where kidnappers were taking place. Presenting the motion, Sani expressed concern over the speed of killings contributing the deputy president of the Senate, Ike Kwerimada, said the creation of state police was one of the major solutions to, ca to cases of kin killings in the country. He further urged kidnap victims to open up on the hideout and activities of kidnappers to assist security agencies in arresting them. The implication of the spirit of killing in the country is enormous. And as part of deliberate measures to curb the exercise of criminal elements threatening the security of our state, especially in Aba, the state police command has launched Operation Poof Ada. The launch ceremony took place at the Aba Area Command. General Oje tells us more. On behalf of the Inspector General of Police, 
The Operation Puff Ada, which is carried out in collaboration with the Nigerian Armed Forces and the Department of State Services, DSS, involves massive deployment of a well-trained, equipped, and motivated personnel, as well as combined operational assets from the various security agencies. It is tailored towards reading Abia State, particularly about of all forms of criminal activities and other vices threatening the peace and security of the state. Speaking during the event, the Commissioner of Police, Abia State, Ene Okun, described the Operation Ada as another landmark of policing in Abia State. He said there has been an upsurge in cases of kidnapping and robbery and other heinous crimes in Abia, especially Abba and its environs perpetrated by hoodlums used as thugs by politicians during the elections. The Commissioner of Police stated that while pockets of kidnapping and robbery take place across the state, the launch took place in Abba because of peculiarity of the city. CPNA charged the officers to shun corruption, calling on members of the public to assist the police with useful information. Launching or flagging up of this operation today is a launching pad to stamping out kidnapping. We have all the strategies put in place to implement the vision of the Inspector General of Police. Also speaking, during the event, the ABA area commander stated that police agency anywhere in the port cannot solely achieve its community security and safety mandates without the support of the community, and therefore called on the public to take advantage of the distressed phone lines to assist in combating crimes in the state, especially the Enimba city. This part of ADA is not for CPA alone, it's not for the IG, it also concerns them, it concerns all of us. Chairman of Aban North Local Government Area, Charles Eswano promised of adequate partnership with the police to make the exercise a success. Urge us all to work in tandem with this particular operation and help. Crime is no respecter of any individual. Even if you have a brother who is a criminal, who you know that his antecedents are not proper. It's safer for you to hand him over to the police. The event features patrol of the officers in the city in demonstrating how battle ready they are to march their words with action. The launch of the Operation Puff Ada attracted representatives of various security agencies, members of PCROC, traditional rulers, captains of industry, market men and women, among others. Jonah Oji, Ems All News. And the federal government has concluded arrangements to inject 10 billion naira as part of measures to revive Erling Bank of Agriculture BOA. The bank will also undergo several restructuring to meet up with the modern technological advancement in banking sector. This was disclosed by the management of Lead Capital Consulting, the consulting tax to provide financial advisory and policy that will support the federal government regarding the recapitalization of the bank. The consortium is to also ensure that good control and governance is instituted in Bank of Industry. The management director of Lead Capital Consortium, Dr. Wale Adewumi, who visited BOA management with his team yesterday, said upon completion of the restructuring of the bank over the next 14 weeks, the federal government will recapitalize it with over 10 billion naira and subsequently the process will continue through public funding. Adewomi further explained that the first funding will come from federal government, then the subsequent one will be from the public. The second objective is also to have the BOA to catch up on the gaps it currently has in its operation. For instance, it's still not having a license, PSS Bank, 
this will be sorted out at this point so that it will now properly license at this point by the CBN. However, the managing director of the Bank of Agriculture, BOE Kabiru Mohamed Adamu, said the bank has recovered over 7 billion naira as part of a standing debt owed it by borrowers. Director of Abia State Polytechnic, Abba Professor Izunyebo, has reinstated the commitment of the current administration of the institution to achieve the goals and objectives of the founding fathers of the college. The rector said that this during a press briefing at the institution's council chamber. The report. Professor Ezonyebo, who stated his administration's commitment towards his growth, said that the management is working towards ensuring uninterrupted academic calendar in the institution. Ebo, who recalled the state of the institution when he assumed his duty as director of Abia Poli, stated that the institution has been able to make remarkable progress. This includes introduction of three new departments, completion of some ongoing projects through the assistance of Test Fund. The rector who commended the Abia State Governor, Dr. Kizai Bazo, for his support to the institution said that efforts are ongoing to ensure that the institution is taken to the global scene. On steps to plug leakages in the institution, the rector said that they have introduced an e payment system geared towards cubbing of financial mismanagement and corruption among his staff. We have a portal that is uh, uh, driven through the e payment process, and I want to say it's good. Since I came in up to now, then nobody collects a call. That's to be true. Uh, this process. You need to ensure that you have a system that is driven to ensure that every combo collected is also accounted. Speaking on challenges facing the institution. Professor Zunebo said one challenge is lack of funds to offset salary arrears. On the welfare of students, Professor Zunebo said his administration has established a free health scheme for the students. Regretted that the institution has not been able to hold a convocation for nearly a decade, disclosed that efforts are ongoing to ensure that the institution holds her convocation by the end of the year. Meanwhile, the institution will be matriculating close to 6,000 students Friday, 26 April 2019. Stella Okichuku, MCL News. And in order to address the shortfall in the supply of petrol, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Thursday said it had resolved to add 215,000 barrels per day, refining capacity to its existing template of 445,000 barrels of crude oil per day in Warwick, Kaduna, and Portacot refineries. The move, it noted, is through private sector driven collocation of its existing facilities in Portacot Refining Company and Warrior Refining and Petrochemicals Company, 
The group managing director and MPC, Dr. Maitanti Barrow, disclosed this on Thursday at the Society of Petroleum Engineers annual Olobiri lecture series and energy forum in Abuja. Barrow stated that additionally, the corporation, through its new initiative of establishing condensate refineries with private sector participation, is providing clusters for the country refining capacity totaling about 250,000 barrels of crude oil per day, which closes the petrol supply and demand gap and also creates positive margins to the, to the investors. According to him, the country's petrol, petroleum products demand is expected to grow from uh, 13.2 million metric tons in 2015 to 15.1 metric tons population growth. Corresponding to this demand is 182 million in 2015, 207 million in 2020, and 234 million in 2025, respectively. The average population growth rate is 30% per annum. The GMD revealed that Nigeria will need a refining capacity of 1.52 million barrels per day of crude oil in order to meet its petrol requirement by 2025. That's much you can take on today's new segment. You're still watching Good Morning out there, your one stop verify show on MCL TV. We'll go for a break uh, when we come by to be time for us to go through the national dailies. Just stay with us. show on TV. Do not deface Abia State with posters. Do not defecate on our streets. Do not litter Abia State. urinate in public places. You know jump and go talk. What do you make me do for this one? I say make me do the things where we carry my heart. Now so one one time. I be not been so 
keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. show on TV. show on TV. You know that yellow purple where they are sweet where we're so? Wait, which one? That one where they trip for me? Now nah, my babe now. Free me job. If you not get money, hide your face. I hide my face. Come, now nah, me you talk like that. Guy, I be big boy. You see this TV so? You know how much I buy him? 200k, see this one. You are poor like the market rat. True. Now me, they call market rat. See all those gushy and pate. Where hush puppy they show for Instagram so. Now me buy a for her. Guy, you know e money. E money now my boy. Money where they spray. Now me give her. See this one though. You know that Linda Cage has for Banana Island. Now me dash her. That one a house. She be you know OBO Davido. That 30 billion with day account. Now me borrow him. <laughs> Forget it. You see that snake where swallow your money? Now me send him. Now see me they go nest. Toile, Baba. A hello, Toile. Where is they? True. Bros, you just have to lie. He did my back. Hey, what did he do? Oh, yes. 
You can now purchase MCL Decoder and also pay for your subscription at our corporate office located at number 9B Obibo Street opposite Keystone Bank or MCL Outlets located at number 203 Fox Road opposite Heritage Bank by Samek Junction, Aba. Or our accredited sales agents, Abarusia Holdings, Zone 18, Shop C, LQA4, Shopping Center, Aba, Best Choice Electronics, Zone 16, ET65 Up, Behind Eco Bank, Enhiro Branch, Aba Shopping Center, Sinfon Investment Nigeria Limited, Zone 12, AS28, Shopping Center, Aba, Ever Blessed Yahweh Electronics, 156 Ekote Pene Road, Aba, Matiko Communication, number 93, Hospital Road, opposite Amawosa Aba, Wanchuku Investment, 43 St. Michael's Road, Aba, Wukocha Electronics, number 300, Portacot Road, inside Orie Ohapiam Electronics Market, Obuka JJ Communication, line 26, B47, Ngwa Road Market, Okorocha Shopping Plaza, number 4, Iberi Street, OK Tech, Number 3, Wala Street, opposite BTC, Aba. Orbit Communications, number 2, Pan Road, Aba. For payment or subscription only, you can visit our accredited agents, Best Choice Electronics, Zone 16, ET65 Up, behind Eco Bank, Enhi Road Branch, Aba Shopping Center, Ever Blessed Yahweh Electronics, number 156, Ekote Pene Road, Aba. Matiko Communication, number 93 Hospital Road, opposite Amaosa Aba. Wukocha Electronics, number 300 Portacot Road, inside Orie Ohapiam Electronics Market. Chris Bank Communication, 232 Orata Road by Express Aba. Branch Office, number 560 Portacot Road by Flyover Aba. For inquiries, call our customer care on 07032. 980089 MCL TV The World in Your Home Going to Pobo Town River State, Nigeria, must be with the boat. You have to cross the Imo River, and this we are set to do with a speedboat from this Akwaibom town of Otaiwa, Igwenga, today known as Ikorabasi. And you will be most entertained if uh, the town is in their festive mood. And it's most likely they are in their annual festival called Mwatam.
we are here to mourn 2009 and to usher in 2010. Opobo Town, River State, Nigeria. A lively place to be every 31st day of December and the 1st of January. This town of the Ibanese on the Imu estuary in River State, Nigeria. One spectacular sight to behold while in this Imu estuary town of Opobo in River State, Nigeria is this 30-foot monument of bronze standing gracefully in the heart of town. It was erected by European friends of the legendary King Jaja of Opobo. King Jaja of Opobo. That's how many have come to know this great African of his times. As if his first name was King, middle name Jaja, and he was surnamed of Opobo. A slave boy turned chief and master of his own house, merchant trader and king. He was a true product of the 19th century. He was born in it and he died in it. He was also a victim of two great events during 19th century Africa. First was slavery and the trade. Jaja saw this brutal period of Africa's past and was himself a victim. Sold away in his prime of life outside his Iboland home. While serving as a slave boy in this great historic town of Boni in River State, Nigeria, Jaja regained his freedom. 1846, he was malnomated. Our adoption. Because slavery was like having somebody under a particular power that would not bring this person into a direct family relationship. But Boni had that particular counter custom that says if a child is less than 12 years so he could be adopted in full adoption plenum as the Romans used to call it into the family and they used a razor type of uh, blade to scrape the hair and nobody else would do the scraping except the mother or the matron into whose family that child would be placed for nurture and for upbringing. 1852, he became a bony chief and master of his own house, a successful and influential oil palm trader. 1869, he led a faction of bony chiefs to establish his own kingdom in this town today known as Opobo. 1870, he was made king of Opobo. Eighteen eighty seven, after a series of trade disputes between his kingdom and Her Majesty's Britain during early colonial Africa, Britain had the upper hand in the dispute. He became another victim of the cruel events during early colonial Africa. Jaja was again kidnapped while as king, banished out of his kingdom and continent at the age of sixty seven to the island of Tenerife. He died while in exile at the age of 70. Join us when we begin a mini-series on the life and times of this late 19th century African monarch, King Jaja of Opobo, in our series, Kings and Kingdoms of the Niger.
All right, thank you for staying with us. And of course, you're still watching Good Morning Habia, your one stop there for show on MCL TV. It is now time for us to go through the papers. And as usual, we are starting with uh, the Daily Sun. At the top right of Daily Sun newspaper this morning, Security Senate summons RGP. Police boss changes shift policy over extrajudicial killing. Read of the story on page six of the Daily Sun. And the major headline says Buari holds valedictory FEC with ministers May 22nd, tax decision and cabinet dissolution thereafter. Go to page six and read of the story. And of course, the picture element Governor Ifan Yuguani of Enugu State and President of Nigerian Football Federation, Amaj Mervin Pinnick, watch as CEO of Zenon Petroleum and Gas Limited, Mr. Philip Akinola. Presents checks from Mr. Femi Otedola to foot medical bills from former separate coach Christian Chuku, and of course, the middle you can see his wife Lilia Chuku in Enugu State. Underneath the picture element, the Okorocha relocates Imo Poli to Ehimembano. The write up says, Science University of Agric at Police Campus in Omawo. The story is found on page 10. And now she prepares to fight governors over unpaid salaries, gratuities, and pension. You can get that on page 9. Goje formally joins Senate presidency race after budget passage. Ndumi, not under pressure from Buhari APC to withdraw. Read up the story on page 8 of the Daily Sun. Underneath the front page of Daily Sun newspaper this morning. Federal government to spend 52 billion naira on e-monitoring of borders is found on page 3 of the Daily Sun. Now we'll move straight up to the bar page there. At the top you see um, Duro Onabule, he says trouble the sleep, Yangago wake up. Read up that, the, what that is actually talking about on page 4 to 7 in our sports. AFCON 2019. NFF gets $260,000 to boost preparation. Get that on page 45. Now the headline there, and of course it's coming from Onoha UK on Public Fair. It says, Christian Chuko, the level of our heroes past. Where you see the picture element of the earning uh, Christian Chuko there. You read up the details at the back page. On Citizen Joe, just to spice up your day. More reps jottle for speakership positions, says news. And the response there says, if all become speakers, who will do the listening? <laughs> it's a big question there. Now to the Nation newspaper. At the top left of Nation newspaper, a do NBA bars members from kidnap cases. Read of the story on page four of the Nation. Underneath that, President of the UK on 10-day private visit. It's found on page 7. FEC holds voluntary section May 22nd. Go to page 9. Tenebu is a builder of men, says Rep. It's found on page 8. Enugu to pay 30,000 naira minimum wage. Go to page 10. And of course, Ra says Guinea won't be easy for eagles. It's coming from Super Eagles coach Kenneth Ra. Read up the story on page 47 of the Nation newspaper. And moving down, APC kicks against pension for Bayasa lawmakers. Go to page 42. Small glass wound. It's found on page 42. And the body within her line is 3,000 in kidnappers then as Senate's level seek action. NLC to Buhari overhaul security. Upper chamber invites acting RGP. He says banditry is not reducing, it has become a business in the north. All businesses in the north are dead. The reason behind this problem is corruption. The details you can get on page 6. Moving down, APC tackles PDP over claim on INEX server. It's found on page 6. And of course, underneath the front page of the Nation newspaper, he says 52 billion naira for E surveillance of borders found on page two. I was giving pistols to protest 
I'll take that again. I was given peace to, to protect ballot box. Go to page 5 and know who is saying that. Now we'll move straight up to the back page of the Nation newspaper. Comments and debate is actually coming from uh, Femi uh, Shegun Badegeshi. He says Sophie's choice. Sophie's choice. Read up the details at the back there. Moving down to the ripples. He says reasons Senate didn't confirm Magu. Says Saraki. And the response there says who cares? There's no need telling us what we already know. That is it with um, the Nation newspaper. And to the next, it says, um, and of course, it's uh, um, the New Telegraph. It's also there last on our desk this morning. At the top there, how S governors sometimes illegally operated crash aircraft. AIB releases Delta, Dana, Bristol, other accident reports. Go to page five and get the story. Airspace boycotts by airlines cuts Namas revenue base. It's found on page five. Buari departs for London, holds farewell for ministers May 22nd. World Bank cuts oil price forecast for Nigeria. It's found on page three. EFCC picks 14 undergraduates, 18 others for internet fraud. EFCC picks 14 undergraduates, 18 others for internet fraud. It's found on page 9 of the New Telegraph. Main snatching, Omo Agege risk prosecution, 6 months imprisonment. It's found on page 7. And the major headline there says, Bandits made 8,000 widows, 16,000 orphans, says Governor. That's talking about the Zamfara crisis. And the first write up says Senate's government, sorry, state government pays 1 million naira to family of each person killed. Government kidnapped two Chinese in a boy. EFCC approves 52 billion naira for a border control project. Read up the story on pages 2 and 9 of um, the New Telegraph. Moving down, six year old found dead inside woman's freezer. Immediately I saw the corpse of my son, I fainted. I was later revived at the hospital. What surprised me was how my son got into a freezer at another street, says mother. It's one of page eight. It's a sad one though. Now on health, food addictive raises risk of insulin resistance, says study. That's on health. Food addictive raises risk of insulin resistance. It's found on page 10 of the New Telegraph. Now we'll move straight up to the back page of the New Telegraph this morning. Runaway darts as night melts. And of course, it's coming from Michael West, guest columnist. Let me quickly read out something that is called out from that headline. It says, there is need for parents to start grooming their boys to becoming men and from men to becoming loving and caring husbands and responsible fathers. It is not women alone that should be molded. Men too need proper mentoring and grooming for future life. You need to read out what that is actually all talking about at the back page of the New Telegraph. Trust me, it's an interesting one. That is how far we can go on today's newspaper review just immediately after the program. Go to the nearest vendor, buy any of the papers and read more of the headlines that we just read out to you this morning. We'll go for a break. When we come back, the program will continue to stay with us. show on TV. Do not deface Abia State with posters.
do not defecate on our streets. Do not litter Abia State. Not urinate in public places. You know, chop and go talk. What do you make me do for this world? I say, let me do the things where we carry my heart. Now, so one one time. I've been having so. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. Hello, my name is Buchi. Keep watching MCL TV and don't go away. God has given you victory. He has given you victory. Aye, aye, God has given you victory. Aye, aye, he has given you victory. What's up, people? It's your boy E Ben, ministering to God's children, and you're watching MCL TV. Don't touch that dial. Peace. I love you. MCL, the word in your home. show on TV. That yellow purple over there, sweet where we're so. Wait, which one? That one where they trip for me. Now my bed now. Free me, job. If you not get money, hide your face. I hide my face. Come, now me you talk like that. Guy, I be big boy. You see this TV so? You know how much I buy am? 200k. See this one. We're poor like don't show the market rat. True. Now me they call market rat. See all those gushy and pate. We hush puppy they show for Instagram so. Now me buy her for her. Guy, you know e money. E money na my boy. Money where they spray. Now me give her. See this one though. You know that Linda Cage house for Banana Island. Now me dash her. That one a house. She be you know O B O Davido. That thirty billion where they account. Now me borrow her. <laughs> 
forget it. You see that snake where swallow that money? Now me send down. Now see me they go nest. Toale baba. Ah hello, toale. Where is it? True. Bros, it is a relay. Is there my back? Hey, what did you say? Oh yes. You can now purchase MCL Decoder and also pay for your subscription at our corporate office located at number 9B Obibo Street opposite Keystone Bank or MCL Athletes located at number 203 Fox Road opposite Heritage Bank by Samek Junction, Aba. Or our credited sales agent, Abarusia Holdings, Zone 18, Shop C, LQA4, Shopping Center, Aba, Best Choice Electronics, Zone 16, ET65 Up, Behind Eco Bank, Enhi Road Branch, Aba Shopping Center, Sinfon Investment Nigeria Limited, Zone 12, AS28, Shopping Center, Aba, Ever Blessed Yahweh Electronics, 156 Ekote Pene Road, Aba, Matiko Communication, number 93 Hospital Road, opposite Amawosa Aba, Wanchuku Investment, 43 St. Michael's Road, Aba, Mukocha Electronics, number 300 Portacot Road, inside Orie Ohapiam Electronics Market, Obuka JJ Communication, line 26 B47 Ngwa Road Market, Okorocha Shopping Plaza, number 4 Iberi Street, OK Tech, Number 3 Wala Street, opposite BTC Aba, Orbit Communications, number 2 Pan Road Aba. For payment of subscription only, you can visit our accredited agents, Best Choice Electronics, Zone 16, ET65 Up, behind Eco Bank, Enhi Road Branch, Aba Shopping Center, Ever Blessed Yahweh Electronics, number 156 Ekote Road Aba. Matiko Communication, number 93 Hospital Road, opposite Amaosa Aba. Mukocha Electronics, number 300 Portacot Road, inside Orie Ohapiam Electronics Market. Chris Bank Communication, 232 Orata Road by Express Aba. Branch Office, number 560 Portacot Road by Flyover Aba. For inquiries, call our customer care on 07032. Nine eight double zero eight nine MCL TV, the world in your home.
people love Nigerian musicians. They love Nigerian men. Uh, Nigerian nuances are being sold out to uh, the rest of the world. Far and wide, beyond any expectation. We're waking up to good sound. We're waking up to um, taking advantage of technological advancement. One, two, three, let's go. Never plan to the way. I'm a musician, whether an entrepreneur, whether as a producer, whether as a songwriter, whether as a singer, whether as a, an instrumentalist, well, I think I'm just primarily a musician, and I'm just me. I've produced, uh, I've produced a number of artists, um, from, from Faze to Asha to Sasha to Dariot Alade to... Charlie Boys and Lady D, to Silver Sadi, Mode 9, Rooftop MCs, Queen, Muma G, Omaomi, Tim Dakola. Some of the things I take into consideration when I get to work with an artist is you must have music that's wholesome um, in terms of the content, in terms of lyrics, in terms of melody. And if you don't, then you must be willing to um, help us create one in an enabling environment where good music can be created. Kobe can bring out the, the soul out of any artist. You, you, you should be passionate and you should be able to express yourself and then believe that you're about to create a hit track. He's world class. You know, so as an artist, you're going to have to be world class to meet up. So that puts in some pressure. I'm in chains, you're in chains too. Our uniforms and you are uniforms too. I'm a prisoner, you're a prisoner too, Mr. Jailer. Uh, it, it just came with a strong urge to address oppression. You have fears too. I'll die, but you said will die too. First time I heard Jailer, I didn't know he wrote it. I just said, whoever wrote this song must have either been on cocaine. It must have been something about the person. Yes. It's cool. It's a song I hold dear to heart, especially because of the message, and um, especially because I feel a song like Jayla is a seed. It's like it's like an arrow um, that's shot out, a uh, didact of sorts to remind people that you know it's. Uh, a lot of things will boomerang after all. I mean, so let's let's live right. Let's do right. Yo, take a picture, cheese. I know we're big, it will also be good. We'll see these guys around the world are feeling our steeds and the ladies are screaming it. Rooftop MCs, they're a bunch of crazy guys. I like them very, very, very much. A 35, I own my own jet. Mansion by the lake and I ain't done yet. Wait a minute, I'm losing direction. I feel foolish, I need your correction. Good first the kingdom, my brother. And the things you post for, Nigeria. Lord, please bring me back. If you have to hit my head like a conga slap. It's a fantastic, wonderful, strong, energetic, vibrant group with a very, very serious message. And I've been working with them for years now. Music brought fame and yes, I misused it. Every other night, your help, I refused it. I don't understand how I got confused. It seems like I'm addicted to Mike and the limelight. Sacrifice, rhyme and right. Just to... We sat in the studio, made the beat, they wrote their rap, I wrote my verse, and um, we put together the song. And um, it's been doing things ever since.
I'm I'm not the Nigerian answer to Stevie Wonder. I'm not the Nigerian answer to Ray Charles. I'm just Calvin Vesicor from Nigeria. I have my name to write uh, as far as history goes. And um, not just because I want my name written uh, on the uh, stones or sands of time, but because I think that um, there's a lot of positive stuff coming out of my country. Um, I happen to be one of many. My head is spinning like a carousel full of attention And I cannot deny that I'm enjoying the attention The crowd is cheering loudly, the world is looking at me And for one second I forget that this is not about me And the spotlight's on me, is the work of only see And I'm just another vessel bringing glory onto thee Don't let it get into my head People think Kobe is boring. Well, when you hang out with Kobe, you know that the guy is not blind. This guy sees. My lack of vision, my lack, my lack of sight, physical sight, um, I would say it has strengthened me. In more senses than five, it has strengthened me. He, he actually visualizes the artist and what he's about to create before it's been done. It's given me the ability to look inward and, and um, to put my inner vision to better use. Kobe mm -hmm. looked at Silver Sadie, looked at Asha, looked at uh, a lot of other people. And he, he began to create something. So we can't say that kind of thing. I'm, I'm inspired by the, the, the things I want to be, the places I want to go to, who I want to be, and stuff. And so I recognize opportunities when they come and um, I try my best to grab them. I'd be ungrateful to not say that I'm successful. Because I know I am. I know that where I started is not where I am. I'm miles away from where I am. I knew from the age of three, four, I'm going to be a musician. I ask myself my whole life, why the flute? Keyboard is more commercial, guitar makes more money. But that flute was just something I wanted to play. A lot of time people say, yeah, but you're in pop music, you're in jazz. Why the flute? I say, I love the tone of the flute. I love to play the flute. I feel fulfilled when I'm on stage, I play my flute, I have a tight band behind me. There's nothing greater than to walk away from a concert and you know, yes, we did well this night. Then is the other aspect of my life, which is classical music, where the audience, it's very quiet, and it's absolute concentration. When you play a classical concert, you're not allowed to make a mistake. In Nigeria, more known for my Afro salsa, light entertainment music, because the classical scene is not yet as developed and money-making as international. <laughs> Classical music is the basic, it's the education, it's how you learn how to play an instrument. You can be 
a classical guitarist and play juju music, and you play juju music better because you know how to master that instrument. <laughs> My idea now is to build with Motherland Group an art center where we bring in from Jos those house of violin players or those house of flute players, or we go to Ogun State and bring the old babas who talk on their talking drums to teach so that our culture will not get lost. <laughs> show on TV. show on TV. Well, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Good Morning Abia, your one stop FI show on MCL TV. And of course, it is time for us to discuss. And today we are looking at um, the state of the nation. And of course, we'll be taking a look at some of the issues that we've talked about on Good Morning Abia. For those that have been following us since Monday, we will be talking about issues raising from, uh, rising from insecurity. The issue of insecurity, we will also talk about the signing of the minimum wage. Remember, there has been several reactions trending that um, um, ranging from some state governors not being able to, you know, pay the 30,000. But good to know that Enugu State Government has also come out to say this morning, that they will be paying the 30,000 naira minimum. We do have a lot to discuss. All the topic we've been mentioned will also discuss um, the issue of child sexual abuse and what to be done to actually curtail all this. And of course, to discuss with us this morning is a journalist. He is a human rights activist. And of course, he is no other person than Damian. Uh, Mr. Damian, good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you, Ma. And, uh Welcome, viewers. All right, um, so let's start with um, the issue of security because there's something that is in the front burner right now. What do you think is behind the increasing weight of insecurity in the country, both in the northern parts, not only the northern part, yes, we have the issue of banditry, kidnapping and all that, but also when you come down here in Abia State, you, of course, you know yesterday, that um, the police command launched Operation Puff Ada just to reduce the high rate of insecurity also in Abia State, especially in Aba. What do you think is the reason behind the weight of insecurity in the country? Thank you, Ma. Um, there are so many things behind insecurity. And, uh, you know, security is a very important aspect of our social life and living. But uh, I think that uh, some of the reasons why we have security issues here and there is as a result of government not squaring up with its responsibilities. Okay. We have the soldiers, we have the police, civil defense, we have the uh, Navy, Air Force, name them, all these uh, uh, armed forces, including the um, immigration and the customs. Okay. All these are security agents, security agencies. We have them here and there. And uh, every now and then, we hear that 50 have been killed, a whole community has been sacked, 90 killed, 100 houses burned. 
and it goes on and on and on to the extent that even top security chiefs retired and the served have been killed have been killed or kidnapped or taken away with this there's no type of uh, uh, grammar that has not evolved within this uh, few years in fact it has become part of the system so initially I think that the the issue started when the security agencies started playing down on their responsibilities. Started when, playing down on their yes, responsibilities, yes. okay. When they started failing gradually and it became uh, a lifestyle. Um, you come into a community, you find out there are dens of armed robbers. They are identified. In Aba here, you find places where uh, Indian hemp and other narcotics are being sold, traded. In fact, they are open, there are open markets for such goods. People come there every now and then to buy, and you know these things are motivators to crime. Yeah. Instead of the security agents coming there to arrest all the people they go those places, they go to those places to collect commissions on daily basis and allow these people to continue what they are doing i can tell you several spots within this area here i have seen policemen civil defense uh, vigilante and all of them going to pick settlement from this people. And you look at situations here on our streets and our major roads, where you have uh, uh, police checkpoints here and there. Some of the times, they don't check anything. Whether you are carrying a human head, whether you are carrying contraband goods, they do not care. Almost every 10, if you go from here to Potakot, from here to Omohia, I mean, these are very uh, local examples. Okay, sir, so, um, hold on. Uh, I'll right. give you time for you to uh, get to those places. All right. Now, you talked about the, the issue of insecurity, you know, started when the security operatives started playing down on their responsibilities. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have also said that we don't have a good number of um, policemen here in Nigeria, and that also they lack the weapons to actually fight for um, you know such crime you know to fight against such crime and now I uh, I also have a, a police friend who told me that they don't have their uh, patrol vans and all that do you also see this as a um, means of you know um, stopping the policemen from actually doing their job because they need to be equipped to actually fight security you don't fight security with your bare hands what do you have to say about this we have the police services commission we have the IGP and the federal government budgets for security. Police have their... What happens to the budget? These are the things. And so, when I say that security issues started uh, getting worse when the police started playing down, it's from the hem of affairs. Okay. Why is it that the IGP would not articulate and know all the... Uh, ammunition, arms and ammunition, all the number of vehicles, the, number, the right number of policemen that they are supposed to engage. Why is it that if you go to the barracks, that uh, if you see where the policemen live, you even pity them. But we have budget for all these things. So why is it that from the top uh, uh, hierarchy, things are not being done well. And it trickles down that these people do not act well. Apparently, you may have known that uh, uh, some of the policemen buy their own uniform. Okay. Okay. We should be provided. We should them. be provided by the, by the uh, IGP or the, the Police uh, Affairs Commission. What are they there to do? What's the uh, Police Affairs Commission doing? What of the welfare? 
So you find out that if a worker is not well paid, if, he's, uh, if he doesn't have all he needs to have, if there's no uh, insurance cover for the policemen, if those who die in, in, in doing the job are not, com their families are not taken care of, they are not compensated, their wives become almost beggars, if those who retire among them don't receive their compensations. So what are we looking out for? So I think that uh, the Police Services Commission, I don't know if that is the real name, but we know we have uh, mm, yeah. that commission, and the IGP, who is at the helm of affairs, if they don't sit down and articulate what Nigeria needs in terms of uh, having good internal security, we are far from telling ourselves the truth. Okay, now, a lot of people have also advocated for state police. Is that the way out? That is one of the Even ways. this morning, the, the news that were read when the issue was raised, um, the Deputy Senate President E.K. Kuhlman also said that, um, you know, state police will go a long way in curbing the increasing rate of insecurity in the country. How do you see that? Yes, um, so many people have been having the fears that uh, when we have a state police, that the state governors will start using them. But the issue is, now that we don't have state police, don't state governors use the, the, the federal police that is now available it's within their the state opponents. against their opponents? What happened in Ekiti State? What happened in Osho State? We are there. Do we have a state police in those areas? We are in the, the state, uh, the national uh, police that we are used. Now, I think that uh, uh, having state police in place should be uh, a ready panacea to the insecurity. Because the policemen we are talking about should be people from within the area. You know, um, having a state police who uh, is just. Um more like um, capital intensive for state governors. Do you see them achieving that in the area of you know making payments and providing payments for the uh, police to actually do their duties very well? Yes, the, the state governments. Looking can, at the state of the economy. Yes, something is behind the state of economy being the way it is. It is not God given that the state of economy is the way. It is. Something wrong is happening from somewhere. Because I want to tell myself the truth that if we have uh, people who are managing our funds well, we shall be able to pay salaries. We shall be able to carry out uh, uh, the capital budget, the capital budget of the state and the recurrent expenditure. All these things must have to be taken care of. Now, um, so many states are owing, and the people are now using that. If the state is not able to pay salaries, why give them the burden of state police? That will uh, mean that the state will be responsible for buying the arms, ammunition, equipping them, paying the salary, yes. I think that if our funds are properly managed, all the states in Nigeria, I don't see any that doesn't have uh, resources enough, okay. both internally generated and uh, the uh, oil okay. revenues. Okay. But you find out that uh, the money that goes into the wrong hands is even more than the one that is channeled to uh, usefulness. I think that each state can afford to pay its own uh, police services. Okay, uh, Mr. Damien, uh, do you also see, um, you know, high rate of unemployment as also a cause to um, insecurity in the country, just like a lot of people have actually said? Yes, that is one of the causes of very uh, high level of insecurity. Unemployment. Unemployment. When you see the number of universities, polytechnics, both private and the public that we have, and the number of graduates they turn out every year, 
All these people, after graduation, they remain idle. Major, majority of them are idle. Even when we talk about uh, entrepreneurship, when somebody goes to school and comes out, and you say maybe such a person can do something better being on his own, what of the capital? I think somebody has to start from somewhere. The high rate of unemployment is one of the reasons, the reasons. why uh, most people go into criminal activities. And I think as well that government has a fault in this respect. Yes, okay. because if the people already working are being paid, according, paid accordingly, as at Wendy, as at Wendy then with the excess funds that go to the wrong hands, more people could be employed. So I think that uh, the state civil service, wherever they are, could employ more. And again, um, if government, either state or federal, could have certain funds for these graduating students, students. so that as soon as they graduate, they train they them. Employed. They train them into a particular. They learn particular skill okay. during the, uh, the the training at the university. But it's been done. It's been done in the yes. NYRC camp. Yes, they are being but given several, that, you know, uh, training. After that, what happens? You go with your certificate because Nigerian educational system is certificate oriented. Even when you train them and they say bye bye, what do they do with the certificate? And when you say. There's a fund that federal government has mapped out. How many people get it without Abraham, without somebody that will corruptly uh, put somebody's name who didn't participate or use ghost names of people who don't exist? And uh, the people for whom the, the, the funds are made don't get anything. All right, thank you very much. You're still watching Good Morning. I'm here, your one stop breakfast show. On MCL TV, uh, the line will be open for you to be part of today's program. And of course, we've talked about security, and now we'll be uh, drifting to the signing of the minimum wage. And of course, you know, we've had uh, several reactions trailing the signing of the new national minimum wage. And of course, call us, tell us your contribution on what we are talking about um, today, your name, where you're calling us from, and don't forget that you must. Reduce the volume of your television set for easy communication. And now, finally, the, uh, the agitation for the 30,000 minimum wage is now in reality. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I am, I am happy that it has finally uh, come to stay. Do you think we should be celebrating? Um, yes and no. Okay. Yes, Give because... Us your yes, because... Um, 30,000 Naira, if you convert it to a dollar, you find out how much it is. It's just too small. I would say it is too small. In that case, um, there's no so much cost for celebration. Okay. Again, that we have achieved it, at least, it's better than 18,000. But here I have my greatest concern is that so many states have not been able to pay 18,000. Now, the argument is, why mm. do we have to celebrate if 30,000 has been approved while states are not able to pay 18? Do you actually believe that states can't pay or that the money is there and is being siphoned? I believe that the states can pay 30,000 comfortably. Comfortably? Yes, because okay. we have so many other means of making money apart from oil revenue. We have internally generated revenues here and there in the state. But uh, some of the problems we are having is corruption. The money goes into wrong hands. Um, you see that certain, in certain organizations, in certain MDAs, ministries, departments, and uh, parastatals, certain of them are overemployed. They have more staff than they need. The issue is what is the aggregate? What is the, what is the right number? And you find out that the number of ghost workers is so high 
in all the ministry, in all the ministries, parastatals, who are the real workers who add value to the state? Who are the people that are serving the state? Why is it that we don't have a, a human capital auditors? Why is it that we don't know the real number of staff working in a particular organization? Is it this? So, um, I have a friend who once told me about the, uh, what happens in a particular uh, parastata. And somebody that was appointed to head that place in a very short period of time built uh, a, a mansion that is worth over 200 million, okay. built a hotel, first class hotel. We had somebody that has served maybe three, four years doing all those things. And you find out that we have uh, heads of personnel departments. Why is it that they cannot tell us exactly? We have 350 staff in this particular place. And you go there, you see that these 350 staff are working. Uh, actually, okay. They are actually working and adding value to the state. Sometimes in a particular ministry or parastata that is supposed to have 350, you have up to 500 plus. And somebody takes the salary of up to 10, 15, 20 people not working and on top grade levels. So how is it that, okay, maybe if we should use the salary of 15 people on grade level 15. Are we not going to be able to pay 30 people on grade level 5, 6? Meanwhile, these people are not working. They are just fictitious names that somebody is earning salary with those names. What do you think the state government needs to do to uh, uh, actually, you know, uh, sanitize the, um, you know, um, the civil service commission so the state government go has been normal. so cold the government all the states because this thing is not happening only in Abia. so government has been so cold in this respect because if they think that they cannot con conduct thorough staff audit they can hire consultants who know how to do it and Call these people one after the other. Let me see your appointment later when you were engaged. Okay. Number one, let me see your confirmation letter. Let me see letter of your deployment to which department, to which office. Let me see when you were transferred. Let me see your identity card. And you find out that these things don't happen. When you say, let the ministry conduct staff audits and find out who are the real staff and who are the ghost workers. It is still those people who have fixed in those ghost workers that are going to conduct the audit. So what are you going to expect <laughs> other than to cover up what they have done for themselves and the crime continues? So I think that the state government has been so cold, they should have uh, the hire the person. services of good consulting firms to do these uh, things so that the state should be paying only those working for it. All right, thank you so much. You're still watching Good Morning Aga, your one stop refresh show on MCL TV. We'll go for a break. When we come back, we'll, we'll continue with uh, the topic of the signing of the new national minimum wage. Do stay with us. show on TV. Do not deface Abia State with posters.
do not defecate in our streets. Do not litter a beer state. Not urinate in public places. You know, chop and go talk. What do you make me do for this world? I say, make me do the things where we carry my heart. Now, so one one time. I've been not been so. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by the MCL TV. Staying with us, you're still watching Good Morning. I'm here, you want to stop I show them CLT, but we're still discussing state of the nation. We've talked about security, and of course, the topic we're looking at right now is the signing of the new national minimum wage. Okay, um, um, you talked about um, the issue that is being experienced in some civil service work, and of course. What I want to ask you, because NLC prepares to fight governors over on base salaries, gratuities and pensions. Outside the labor unions, you know, um, the steps they want to take to fight against governors um, that are still owing salary arrears and of course gratuity and all that. What do you think the federal government need to do to actually mandate governors to offset their salaries? All right. Even with the very proper reform money that was given to them? Yes. Um... You know, uh, by the uh, Constitution, uh, we shall say that the states are independent. But it does not mean that federal government cannot come in to help out in crisis like this. You see, I, I look at this as a crisis situation. And the federal government really came out with the Paris Club reform. Unfortunately, um, Although that sometimes, yes, the, the president made it clear that all those people, all those estates that were owing salary should use such funds to pay. But they really failed to comply. Um, I think that uh, there are certain things that can be done. There should be um, a constitutional review. The House of, we have the Senate and House of Representatives. There should be a bill sponsoring a new bill that should make the states responsible to the federal. So that there should be oversight functions by the, the federal government. Certain arms of the government should have oversight functions. Not only that they should leave the states to be independent, that independence should have to be abridged. That is okay. why, that is why uh, some states, in some states, funds made for the people are not utilized. And the federal government somehow is handicapped to do anything because there is no law stipulating that state governors should be responsible yes, to, to the president or a particular authority or that there should be a supervisory authority over the states. So although the states are independent, there should be a law that should that should make it mandatory for the federal government to have at least a level of uh, 
uh, oversight functions so that these people would know that they are responsible to the people, to a certain authority above. I think that's uh, a, a right step. Okay, thank you so much. And now from that topic of the signing of uh, the new national minimum wage, we'll move over to the call for Igbo presidency. And now several weeks to the inauguration of President Mohamed Buhari for second term debate and discussions as to where his successor should come from in 2023 have begun with Igbo leaders insisting that it will be the turn of the Southeast for the sake of equity, justice and fair play. And of course, national leader of Ohanese Youth Wing, Ohanese Ndibu Worldwide, Arthur Obiora, have said that has said that Igbo presidency 2023 is not negotiable. Mr. Damien, how factual is this? Yeah, um, when you look at Nigeria, uh, we see a country that is called one indivisible entity. entity. We call it one Nigeria. And uh, from that uh, perspective, what we should be looking at is a president that has a Nigerian, total Nigerian mindset, not a clannish president. But however, we still have the other option of looking at what has been happening over the years and know why power must tilt to one end in the name of one Nigeria, in the name of bringing out that person that has a national mind, a broad mind. Really, if you ask me whether the current government at the federal level has that national orientation, I would say no. I would think that we have a clannish government. Okay. Now, when it, it comes to Igbo president, I find out that since the end, since the Civil War in 1967, when Agui was killed, the, the Civil War broke in 1967, and this is 2019, 52 years. No Igbo man has been a head of state. No Igbo man has been a president. The highest an Igbo man has achieved has been a vice president. Uh, Senate president, and that has been it. Uh, the larger number of heads of state and presidents have come from the north, and we have had certain from the uh, southwest. And a question may be asked, if we really want to balance Nigeria, mm. is it only when the Igbos are excluded from being president of Nigeria? Or does it mean that just no man in Igbo land that has that national mind, that broad mind that can encompass, that is uh, all embracing, that will know that from Bayelsa to Kaduna to Kano Sokoto Medugri, that we are all Nigerians? Okay, um, that brings us to the next question. Looking at the political atmosphere, who is the highest ranking political Igbo person? Some of you think that, um, you know, uh, <laughs> the bold enough to actually contest against the uh, Northerners if they actually come out to contest come 2023? Mm. Well, I wouldn't just sit here to pinpoint is Mr. A or Mr. B, but I know that Igbo people have a number of technocrats, a number of good politicians, a number of good leaders, a number of people that are sound in governance that can saddle the affairs of Nigeria. The issue is, will that opportunity be given or will it be dragged to a particular uh, side of the nation? Will that opportunity to be given? We have seen states adopting equity to produce governors and other political positions. Those equity, peace, fairness and justice also apply with that of the presidency. If in certain states we say there must be equity, and in certain states they say this particular senatorial zone gives us governor for this term, the other, and the other. Mm. If such 
an arrangement happens in zoning uh, the, the Senate president? Why is it not supposed to happen with the president? I think that there will be nothing called equity. Can we, say, can we see who is on the line? Sir? Sorry right. to cut you short. No problem. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Oh, let's go ahead, yeah, sir. I think that uh, we are still far away from the thing called equity. If it means that president should come either from the north or from the west for us to be Nigeria and none from Ebola. Uh, let's see who's on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Uh, good morning. All right, um, we we'll lost that call. Now, the race for 2023 has started um, now. Um, do you actually see the Ibus working towards you know, actualizing the call for the Igbo presidency. Yes. Um, if it were not so, Ohanes and Igbo wouldn't have started uh, making their calls. Uh, Ohanes the youths and a certain other uh, top notches in uh, Igbo nation wouldn't have started making inputs and making their feelings known that the president next should come from Ebola. Um, what there is now is that within the Igbo politicians, they should come home and harness their potential. Let's see who's on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. You need to reduce the volume of your television set and call us back. Go ahead, sir. Yes. The Igbo politicians need to come home, uh, search inwards, speak with one voice, and not to produce uh, political uh, jugan. No, just this uh, language they use. Uh, I'll remember it. But people who are determined to take the Igbo cause to the next level to such an extent that we should be able to have an Igbo president. Not somebody that could be bought over, that could be sponsored by a Northerner mm -hmm. or a Westerner to say, go there, make sure you spoil things. How much does it cost? I'll pay you, I'll settle you. That is not the type of Igbo politicians we have. We have had them some years back who we are sponsored to come and spoil things here. So this time around, the Igbo nation should come together, speak with one voice. Talking about Igbo um, people to come together and speak in one voice, based on the theory of um, population, don't you think that the North will remain in power because of their huge population? You find out that... Even when we come together. Yeah, that is why uh, when we say Igbo is marginalized, sometimes people say, is it true or is it not? But let me ask a question. Those northern presidents, were they elected only by the northerners? Were there uh, Igbo voters that really voted for them? If this thing has to be harnessed from the center and the Igbos, come back home and put their home in order. I think that when an Igbo man stands as the flag bearer, every person will have to vote for him. But when we say uh, the Northerners have larger number, we must just be satisfied with uh, maybe vice president if, if, in, if, it, if it comes at all. That may be our uh, highest position as second class citizens, citizens of, Nigeria. of Nigeria. So I do not think that from the top, things are being done well. Things are not being done well. All right, so let's see who's on the line before we wrap it up. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. 
All right, um, that's how far we can go uh, with the day. Lastly, what's your, um, you know, last word talking about the issue of insecurity? What had your um, advice? Because it is uh, um, an issue that is on the front burner. Yeah, my advice is that the federal government should step up. The service chiefs should step up their actions. Okay. The state governors who are the chief security officers at the state level should step up action. It's, it is not supposed to be uh, an issue of we are on top of the matter, whereas people are being slaughtered every 15 minutes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Damien Aharayan, for making our time to be with us on today's program. All right, this is how far we can go uh, with um, the discussion segment. We'll go for a break. When we come back, it will be time for sports coming from General Oji. Do stay with us. show on TV. show on TV. Chuku nene, carry on your blood. Chuku nene, carry on your blood. On nene, kanda rube kende ri bege. No one, no one. On nene, oh, on nene, oh, on nene, oh. Hello, my name is Buchi. Keep watching MCL TV and don't go away. Aye, God has given you victory. Aye, He has given you victory. Aye, God has given you victory. Aye, He has given you victory. What's up, people? It's your boy E Ben, ministering to God's children, and you're watching MCL TV. Don't touch that dive. Peace. I love you. MCL, the word in your home. show on TV.
non-stop breakfast show on TV. show on TV. We apologize that sports will not be coming your way on today's program and of course join us tomorrow for another edition of Good Morning Abia. I am Stella Okichuku. Stay tuned for Una Samachi Omaga. Bye for now.